in order to accept what's called the linear no threshold hypothesis for radiation effect on living things, you have to accept also the belief that nature is stupid. Over billions of years, we have evolved immune systems because everything in nature lives in a chemical environment and in a radiological environment. 700,000 years ago, there was twice as much U-235 and so forth. So we have organisms that can survive in a thousand times more radiation than a human can. Well, why is that? Cells have a, an ability to repair the broken bonds in DNA. They have the ability to perhaps repair some protein damage. Uh, they have the ability to digest the junk that's produced by damage. And they have the ability to actually eat themselves and kill themselves. So cells can actually die intentionally because they've become so screwed up inside because of various forms of chemical or radiological damage. And that's actually what happens when you have radiation poisoning is you've killed cells typically in the intestinal tract first that are, are very uh, susceptible and not, not able to handle that amount of radiation. So here's a, just a chart from Wikipedia about the metabolism in all our cells it has exogenous damage from the outside world, radiation, chemistry, and so forth. It has endogenous damage from inside itself because it does metabolism. It burns, it burns its fuel internally for energy. And the most damaging things are oxidants, hydroxyl radicals, uh, alcohol, that, those kind of chemicals that have a lot of oxygen available to corrode the insides of a cell. The reality is that over a few billion years, Mother Nature figured out how to deal with this. And so every cell, every second, every cell in our body does a repair of some sort. A DNA repair in particular, in, in case of a break in a DNA strand. Natural radiation is in our bodies all the time because we, we eat. Potassium-40 is a low content of natural potassium, but it's radioactive and it's within our bodies. We have about 4,400 decays per second within our body of potassium-40. So our bodies are busy radio, being radioactive. In 1946, Herman Muller got a Nobel, Nobel Prize for his work with radiation and, and other things on, on genetic mutations. And in his prize, Nobel acceptance speech, he basically said that there's a linear relationship between radiation dose and the problems that it causes for the organism. But his data didn't actually support that. So this was an interview done with someone who knew about that from years later in the IEEE spectrum a little while ago. And his, basically his data didn't say that and the people who worked for him disagreed with what he said in his Nobel acceptance speech. However, the problem was that the, the National Academy of Sciences took his words. And that's the beginning of where the standard for linear no threshold dose, in other words, no dose is too small not to cause trouble. And we know that that's not true from actual measurements. This is another example of a radiation lie from this England, Christopher Busby was a doctor who said that there was leukemia in kids in Wales being caused by a nuclear reactor there. Well, it turned out he had fibbed when they did the analysis of his data. He had done things like counting the incidence of leukemia twice. He had mixed up figures from small and rural areas, creating clusters of leukemia that didn't exist. And in fact, when they looked at the actual leukemia cases in one particular region, instead of having uh, 10 cases, there was one.